Good morning and welcome to Sunday worship here at Northminster United Church, also renamed today the Garden of Eden because we're in the middle of all of our lovely plants that are part of our plant fundraiser and we thought we should take advantage of their beauty and include them in worship today. Today is uh, May 16th, 2021. Welcome to you all. Together, we gather in, continue, uh, in continuation of the celebration of Easter, the good news of Easter, because Easter, as we know, is a whole season and not just one day. And that's because there is so much need for the world to hear the good news and the message of hope and that message of possibility for our lives and for the world. On our communion table, you'll see shortly our communion table, our Christ candle is there. It is lit. We always light that candle that it may draw us together as we ready ourselves for worship and the assurance that we are not alone and that all are welcome. We also acknowledge with gratitude that we live, work, worship, and play on Treaty 7 land. Let us worship. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. As the resurrected Jesus prepares to leave the disciples one last time, he opens their minds and he blesses them. We call today, this day, Ascension Sunday. The result after he ascends is their return to Jerusalem with both great joy and with desire for continually worshiping and blessing God in the temple. What happens when the eyes of our hearts are enlightened? We know the hope that we have been called to, and as we wait for the Spirit with hope, we celebrate with abandon because we have no other ruler than the one who reigns with love and justice. Dancing, it changes us. It transforms us. It brings us to life. It awakens our senses. Imagine the dreams and the heartbeat and the life stirring in Jesus and his disciples as he readied them for this next chapter of ministry. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. So we ready ourselves for new life. We get ready in this time to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. And even when rain set, still sets in, open those umbrellas of gratitude and set out anyway. Let's pray. Holy One, justice seeker, Lover of creation, help us to put on our dancing shoes so that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. Come and dance with us. Engage with us as we seek you so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. Let's sing together now. Our hymn together, Draw the Circle Wide.
Every week this uh, season in our conversation time, we have been talking about dreamers. So if you think way back, it was Martin Luther King was one of our very first weeks. We talked about the opera singer, Marian Anderson. On Earth Day Sunday, it was Greta Thunberg, all these dreamers. So who is it today? Well, today it might surprise you a little bit that this week's dreamer is Jesus. Jesus had dreams for a better world and for a better life for his community. You see, even in houses of worship in Jesus' day, um, not all people were considered equal. Some were considered superior to others, men over women, for example. Um, Children in that society had quite little value. That's why it was so powerful when Jesus said, let the children come to me, if you remember that story. Um, people who were maybe treated poorly or even excluded because um, they were immigrants, they were from another place. Uh, Jesus often reached out and touched people who were considered sick or unwell or unpure in his day. Um, he talked with them, he, he helped people, he helped women, he reached out and like, gave the woman at the well like, a cup of water to drink. He, he cared for people who were from another place, people who were discriminated against. All of those things in Jesus' day would have been unheard of. But Jesus had a dream. He was the dreamer, like I said. He had a dream of what the kingdom of God would be like. And in the kingdom of God, in the dream of Jesus, um, neighbors would go out of their way to, to help each other, especially those who were who were suffering or were strangers um, in some way. If somebody were left out, Jesus showed us that there was a need to reach out to those folks. Even though Jesus lived here on earth a long time ago, when he left, he said that we were to be his presence in the world. So now it's us it's up to us. It's, it's we as Christians here, as Northminster here, as United Church people here. It is, it is us now who take on his dream. Our colorful umbrellas through this whole season have been a sign of joy and hope, even on rainy days. And today we're going to offer um, another... Um, I'm missing a space. There it is. Uh, today we're going to offer up another phrase to remind us of our dreamer today of Jesus. So for today's phrase, let's write on our umbrella, welcome to all. Welcome, I'm going to go on to the other side. Welcome to all. Welcome to all. Let's share together in a moment of prayer, a repeat after me prayer. Join me if you can. We offer thanks for dreamers true, for all they are and all they do. Let us become dreamers too and bring new life to me and you. Amen. Our 
Our first reading for May 16th is from Psalm 47, verses 1 to 6. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great sovereign over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God, God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our sovereign, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. Our next reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. And see, I am sending upon you what Abba, God, promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The story of the resurrection is a story of God making a way where there was no way. The story of the resurrection is the story of light in the darkness, of possibility breaking through when it was thought that nothing was possible. Resurrection is a story of people journeying through the wilderness, not knowing the destination, but having courage and trust in the one who encouraged that journey. This is also the story of the Christian church and how the good news of the resurrection is carried out as it's told in Acts, which we're hearing from today. Because, or rather, before um, before they were called Christians, the early church called itself the way. As witnesses of Jesus' ministry and resurrection, the early Christians showed that, that way, the way that Jesus had taught them. They engaged in service for one another and for strangers, living into that inbreaking kingdom of God in the community together. They lived in faith they lived in trust in God. They lived with courage. Followers of the way also knew that Jesus, as he describes himself in John's gospel, for example, as the way, the truth, the life. They knew this because they had seen firsthand God make a way through death into life in the very person of Jesus. In the first days after the resurrection, the apostles, and all of those who had been following Jesus, they devoted themselves to learning about the kingdom of God from the resurrected Christ. And it talks about that a lot in the book of Acts. But today, we recognize this as Ascension Sunday, where we remember that Jesus ascended into heaven. And so the church now, after this point in the story, had to figure out how to live into Christ's new kingdom without him being physically present as an example to follow. 
the writer Jan Richardson, you've heard me share her wonderful poetry before. She describes this time of year in the church and in our lives, really. She describes it as leave-taking time, leave-taking. In the church, this is often the time of year, May, June, end of June, um, where you will see ministers taking sabbaticals, or it's the natural time of the year where ministers will move to a new church. Um, it's the time of year in the church year where you feel um, th things are trying to wrap up a bit for summer. We're winding things down. We're taking a break. Um, in our lives, we're seeing school finishing for university now and children and youth later. We're seeing graduations happening. Um, people are moving. So it's, it really is, like Jan Richardson says, it's a time of leave-taking. It's a time of transition. It's also that way, really, in this rhythm of the church year, um, this idea of, of leave-taking. For some time now, we've been watching since Jesus' resurrection. He, he appears to his disciples on occasion. He, he teaches them. He encourages them because he knows of his coming absence. They're certainly aware of it after his, his death. And then certainly as Jesus um, practices, I love this, this art of departure, it's how he does, goes about this with um, intention and with care and with love, this leave-taking. It's interesting to note how Jesus chooses to leave. Like in Bethany, it is a beloved place of memory for Jesus. Here he found hospitality in those sisters of Mary and Martha and his dear friend Lazarus. He raised Lazarus from the dead. Here he received the gift of a woman's anointing shortly before his death. Bethany has been a place of blessing for Jesus. And so from this place of blessing, Jesus in scripture leaves, offering a blessing as he goes. And while he was blessing them, Luke's gospel tells us that it says he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. As we see also in the Gospel of John, the blessing is part of the leaving. And somehow the leaving is part of the blessing. His departure and the way he enters into it is, is part of Jesus' final gift to his friends. In much the same way that Jesus tells Mary Magdalene on Easter morning not to hold on to him. Jesus at the table and in his ascension urges his disciples and his friends to grow. He invites them to enter into a, a new relationship one, with him that will no longer depend on his physical presence. But will instead rely on his trust and on his love for them. It will be about them growing into the people and the community that Christ had called them to be. Growing into that. So it's the time for them to become his transforming work in the world that he has physically left but not abandoned. Joyful, sorrowful, bittersweet, unplanned or planned, unexpected or expected, it could be welcomed or resisted or grieved. No matter how leave-taking happens or how it looks in our lives, it always, it always brings for us an invitation. And it makes spirit, it makes space for the spirit to come. So as you're navigating, as we all do, the leave-takings in our lives, Maybe a move or a job change or grieving the loss of a loved one or the end of a relationship. Whatever the leave taking might be, how do you, how do we keep our eyes open for the invitations and opportunities that this leave taking holds? What blessings do they offer? What blessings do they invite? In Acts, we watch as Jesus' followers try to figure things out on their own without Jesus there to guide them. They're vulnerable, especially as they're sent out into a world that really despises them because of the change and the challenge that they were offering, something very different than the powers and the status quo of the day. 
it would often go like this for the early Christians. There are some patterns that exist. Jesus' post-resurrection followers would have a dream of some kind, of some a breakthrough revelation. They'd, they'd come together to follow the clues. They'd, they'd come across a person or a gathering maybe that have just witnessed a miracle. They've had some kind of conversion experience, these people they're meeting. These new folks were often quite unlike Jesus' followers, but they'd in, inevitably come to respect what was going on. Eventually, after some muddling around with lots of questions and lots of ideas of, well, is this from God or isn't this from God or is this about grace or does someone have to earn grace, they just give in. That's how it would end up. There'd be a, a realization, a recognition, a, a giving in to the evidence of what their hearts already knew in these stories. And this is what Paul later refers to as the fruits of the Spirit. He talks about that a lot in Galatians 5. So in other words, they recognized in all of these times in these stories, these grace moments, that faith, that Spirit, that was out front leading them the whole way. And that's hard to see when you're afraid or concerned or anxious and wanting to look back. But out front leading them the whole way was their faith and the spirit. There was these patterns, like I said, for these early Christians, maybe one that also fits us, I think, today, as we find ourselves in a new space after a leave-taking. Um, maybe it sounds familiar. So first you'd say there's these early Christians, they'd see a roughly formed expression of God's new life emerging. So something is happening. Something is changing. And they'd approach it with apprehension and fear. Then they'd compare this new thing with what they'd come to know already as their old thing, which was in their mind the only thing that was sacred. They'd necessarily then finally move into a space of chaos and uncertainty, this wilderness time, so to speak, of trying to make sense of all the change and what this new space was that God had sent them into. They'd struggle publicly. They'd struggle privately. Um, questions like, like I said earlier, can this be of God? Is this in keeping with what we value? Lots of questions to think about. They would hope things would go back to normal or that they could turn back because that's what we all do when we get scared. We just want to go back to where we came from. But eventually, in their own efforts to spread the good news, because that's what they were trying to do this whole way along, these early Christians would also, in these moments of change and uncertainty, find transformation themselves, whether it was by people or, or situations they encountered. So it wasn't just about them changing the world, but how the world was transforming them in all of their encounters. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Hints at new life for us, then our apprehension, our comparing new things to the nostalgia of the past, then struggling with uncertainty and doubting God, but then, but then... Then there is the surprise and the aha and the wow moment that the Spirit has bent the rules to surprise us like God did the early Christians. To, the Spirit has bent the, the rules to surprise us in new ways. Those early Christians, they'd try wiggling out of the bind, but eventually they'd have to admit that it was the Spirit's work that they were witnessing and they'd learn to embrace it. Yes, indeed, the Spirit was already at work around them, and they just had to stop and notice and choose to participate, embracing it. They'd have their hearts enlarged to, to welcome this new expression of God's presence. And then they'd embrace these new birthings, just like they'd been transformed themselves. This transformation would allow them to see what Jesus had been up to from the very beginning. Passages like this, stories like these ones in Acts, after Jesus takes leave with his ascension, they really resonate with me right now, and especially with everything going on at Northminster these days. 
we are being faced with big decisions and, and, and conversations right now. We're being asked to leave behind the comforts of what we have always known and be curious and open about where God is leading us next. God is surprising us with new directions, and yet all along, all the way, there is that unconditional love and grace that goes with us. We are taking leave from the past, even despite our fear, and we're moving forward with courage, knowing that if we keep holding on tight to what's behind us, our hands are, are so closed, we cannot possibly hold what might be offered to us next that God wants us to embrace, what God is offering us next. That was the way it was for those early Christians as they moved out into the world, knowing they couldn't go back, they couldn't hold on to what was with Jesus, but relying instead on Jesus' teachings and his prayers and his encouragement for what they would be called to next. I want us all to consider how the pandemic has changed us and, and what we have learned about what it means to be the church in this time. We think about all the things we're missing right now. Those were probably the tools, but not necessarily the mission of the church. Have you noticed that? The mission of the church is probably, and it is still continuing, but the tools that we are missing are what have changed that's important to think about, how the pandemic has changed us, what it means for us to learn about what it is to be the church in this time, how the Spirit is sending us through this wilderness time to figure out with purpose what our next steps are. As a church, uh, I do want to congratulate you for looking to the future. You're doing this with courage. You're doing this with faith. You're remembering that, yes, there have been challenges. There still will be challenges. Even in our promised land, we are seeking, so to speak. But so much is possible because we are not alone in any of this. And as Christ prepared his disciples for his leave-taking, so too are we prepared in our own leave-taking going forward, what our next steps will be together for our Northminster family and for the ministry we offer the world. Our road to change is ahead of us, and we are well on the way. Actually, I think that there still might feel like there's choice, but I think the choice is fear and wanting to go back or the choice of trust and what God is leading us to next. Indeed, we're in this time of leave-taking. As we step into the future, I want you to remember this, that we have a power within us, that we can do more than we ever think is possible, of, of trying or facing new things, because that power is within us. It is available to us, that Christ-centered, Spirit-centered we will not be defined by fear power. I want you to know that the God who has brought you this far already, through a lot of of things and time and generations and experiences and life and history, the God who has brought this church family this far already is also the same God who will be with you in your leave-taking going forward. May we go forward with courage, for the choices and paths that lie ahead. Amen. Let's sing together now our next hymn, O a Song Must Rise.
A song must rise once again From the villages and cities A new song must be sung A song must rise for the spirit to descend Oh, a song must rise Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to move in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. During this time of prayer, I invite you to type your comments into the uh, comments section. You lift up your prayers that way, share them with one another so we can hold your prayers and lift them to God. Let's pray. For the beauty of the world in all its diversity, we give you thanks, O oh God. May our gratitude to you fill our days. We need your healing, O Holy One, for our troubled planet, for our nation, for all who are struggling in body and mind, relationship and spirit. We remember those who are suffering this day. Come, O God, restore our lives. Be with each of us now in whatever leave-taking we might be facing. May the dance of your spirit ever call us to engage with you and with the needs around us. Lead us, guide us, surround us, and fill us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In our prayers this morning, um, prayers, uh, bra a prayer from Brad for children at home with online schooling and parents supporting them, sometimes pulling their hair out. From Tracy, a prayer for Ernie's mom and all seniors as they continue to be isolated due to the pandemic. A prayer from Brad, prayers for the gardens to bring new life. And yes, a prayer from Kim for his mom, Winona. We, we hold her in prayer um, for, for comfort and, and peace that she may know our love surrounding her in her decline in hospital. Prayers uh, for all the organizers and volunteers helping with the flower sale this weekend. Also a prayer for Suzanne Vandervoort um, in the sudden passing of her sister, her older sister Lucy in Regina this week, and as her family grieve this loss. Please do continue to share your prayers and lift them up together. We hold these prayers, we, we hold these prayers spoken, the prayers that we hold in silence in our hearts, but, but still, most certainly, uh, God knows. And we lift them together. And let us join our hearts together in saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to act with compassion and justice. Teach me to dance with the beat of your heart. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Next Sunday, we will be concluding our Easter season series for this season ends with Pentecost, when the flames and the spirit came and danced among the people and sent them out to be the church in the world. We are so grateful for the ways in which you have continued in this time to be part of um, the church, to continue out its mission, even though we aren't together. You have continued to support. You've continued to give life and movement to the ministries of Northminster. You are the hands, you are the feet of the church now in the world, and we thank you for that. Let us bless our offerings with this prayer. Holy God, if we are to dance the dance of justice, help us to find the steps of service to invite others to dance with us, and to always remember that our gifts provide the resources to make the future possible. Bless our gifts this day that we might always follow the lead of Christ's call to pour ourselves out for the sake of love. These words we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Announcements. Um, please, again, I say this every week, our Friday announcements are your key. That email is your key to knowing everything that's going on around the church. So please take note of what's happening for yourselves and others. Um, after church today is coffee as usual on Zoom. Most of you have the link. And if you don't, by all means, reach out to me now with an email or a text or a message on Facebook, whatever it might be, and we'll be able to get you the Zoom link. Stories. Um, I've mentioned this now for a few weeks, and I'm going to keep asking because I know you have stories. I know you have friends who attend other churches. I need you to phone them or email them, ask them how it is they use their building. How is their building a tool for ministry? What programs are offered? What outreach opportunities exist? How do people within the church and the community use that building? Collect those stories and send them to me, even if it's just a short 
short paragraph. I'd love to know what it is, what ideas are that you find for Northminster going forward. So please, please do that this week. Stroll for your soul. This is also in the Friday email. email. This is a fun walking opportunity with a bit of reflection that comes in an email to you every day. It starts this Wednesday. Click on the link, register, it's free, and we'll collect our kilometers and see how far we can walk with all the others who are participating across the region. Um, I know there's close to 150 people registered, so it'll be fun. Join that. See all the information in the Friday email. We have a board retreat this week. So in addition to our short business session, I'm hoping all committee members, all board members, trustees will plan to attend so that we can do some larger vision planning and conversation beyond the day-to-day, month-to-month business um, things that we often get focused on. So plan to attend Wednesday. As you can see, we have had a very successful plant fundraiser. Not only are there plants lined up down this aisle, they're across the back, they're in the entryway, they're along the sides. We're so thankful for your um, participation in this. And there's a short video now I'd invite you to watch. Thanks so much again, and please plan to pick up your plants this afternoon between 12 and 4. The poet Rumi invites us with these words. Dance when you're broken open. Dance if you have torn the bandage off. Dance in the middle of the fighting. Dance in your blood. Dance when you're perfectly free. May these words be so as we go in peace today. And may the loving God and the risen Christ and the dancing spirit fill you all with what you need for the days ahead. Thank you so much for being here. We hope to see you soon. And let's go out singing. Go to the world. Bye for now. Joyous day.